Okay, this is the absolute last discussion I'm going to have on this topic. Remember when I told y'all that this person right here was going to make a video and that she wasn't going to do no two-week demonic fast and that she wasn't going to be able to resist coming on YouTube to do a quote-unquote video? Well, look at this. Not even... Check this out. She's doing a bunch of uploads. This is a re-upload. She did that video before. This is the false prophet we're dealing with. Um, that's a re-upload again. That's a re-upload. A re-upload. She's uploading old videos, ladies and gentlemen, of false prophecies. And here's another one. Re-upload. So she told y'all she was going on a two-week fast. I showed it to you in the other video. In my camera, I showed it to you. She deleted it. Um, wait a minute. She said she was going to go off YouTube for two weeks, right? Not even a week. Right? See? False Prophet is still going. Still going. Common Jezebel. Look at this. A re-upload. And when someone accuses, uh, uh, when someone, I'm sorry, tries to corrupt a false prophet, they will call evil good and good evil. This is the last, last time I'm going to talk about this. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I got a soul texting me right now. Hold on. It's actually a soul that just texted me, okay, um, claiming that this particular individual right here, okay, has threatened to send her subscribers after her, after the soul I just that just texted me right now. So as you can see, it's very evident. If you disagree with false prophets, they will send uh, their minions after you to falsely flag your channel. Now... Uh, recently, there was uh, videos against this person exposing her for being a false prophet. And there's video footage to back that up. So, with that being said, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, that's me disliking that. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, these are minions that are following her. But anyway... With that being said, she was recently accused of false prophecies. Check out the ones I did. The ones that the Lord Jesus Christ used other evil agents to expose this particular individual. Let's see something. One second, ladies and gentlemen. The audio is very poor. Okay, a Jezebel, this Jezebel is saying, okay, she's making an excuse for the false prophecies that she's already put out. She's saying you can mess up. I'm going to make something very clear, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot, um, quote, unquote, mess up on false prophecies. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify something to you, okay? The Word of God says, let's test the spirits, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it again. Let's test the spirits, shall we? Let's test the spirits right now. Hold on. Word of God says, if a person... If a person prophesies at one time and it doesn't come to pass, that person was never sent by God. They're a false prophet. Okay? So let's test the spirit, and, and let's see if the word of God says it's okay, you can falsely prophesy, and let's see if God says uh, you can quote-unquote mess up. Let's go to 1 Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22. 
My soul is texting me again. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to show you for yourself. She says that it's okay for you to mess up. Basically, she's calling Jesus Christ a liar, saying that if you falsely prophesy a couple of times, it's okay. God will give you. You're still a true prophet of God will forgive you. You're still a true prophet of God. Now, if you haven't blasphemed God, okay, um, if you haven't blasphemed the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, you can ask God to, con you can confess your sins, repent of it, go through the correction so that those sins could be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, that's for false prophets that have told false prophecies in the past. But after that, don't ever falsely prophesy again. Accept the correction, move forward, let God use you in a mighty way. But this particular individual, and I'm going to show you her, I showed you her face. You know, she's got the old man on, that's why she looks that old, okay? It's because the Bible says when a person's drenched in sin, they, they're adorned in the old man. That's her channel, so you guys can see that. That's why she looks mad old. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just being bold for the cross, defending my father, amen? Deuteronomy chapter 18, 22 says, 22 says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. God's saying in this verse, if a false prophet comes about, prophesy falsely one time, it doesn't come to pass. The Lord has never sent them. But yet they still run with their they still run their mouths, and out of their mouths comes out these filthy, deceptive, false prophecies. These false prophets are not cheap they're goats straight up they're not children of god they're children of the devil now ladies and gentlemen i'm going to show you another scripture deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 20 but a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything i have not commanded or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is put to death basically the wages of sin for the wages of sin is death okay Jeremiah 28, 28, 9. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as, as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. So you to test the prophecy. So if a person prophesies something, and I'm not just talking about one thing, I'm talking about if they prophesy multiple prophecies and they come to pass and they have, this person has a very good track record. Now one lie, like the prophets of old, that is a prophet sent by God. Not a person like this and other false prophets that prophesy a bunch of a biggest load of crap, excuse, excuse the expression, and it doesn't come to pass at all. And they have nothing but lies and false prophecies. That's not a prophet of God. That's a prophet of the devil. Now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to bring you another scripture to back up what I'm telling you, that if a person prophesies falsely once and it don't come to pass, that person is not a, a prophet of God. Let's check out uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay. Souls texting me some more information. Bear with me a moment, please. The Bible she uses the ESP. One second, please, guys. I'm right in the middle of ministering to you. I didn't mean to cut my son off. But the Lord wants me to speak on this, like right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed, shall we? The Lord says that you do not, you know, see, here's the thing. When you're standing before the judgment seat of Christ, are you going to tell him, Father, we can mess up. We could falsely prophesy. We're not perfect. Can you let us into heaven? God is not going to let a person with spot and blemish in heaven. Okay, we all fall on our faces and we all fall short of the glory of God. That's why we have to confess our sins, repent, go through the correction, accept correction, so those sins can be washed away with the blood of a lamb. And here's what else I wanted to show you, guys and gals. When you are righteous with God and you hearken unto the words of God, you are entitled to blessings. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Okay. 
Um, this is the Lord giving the words to these false prophets. 28 verse 7. The Lord shall cause the enemies that rise up against thee and the smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one day and flee before thee seven ways. That's what the Lord told me. That any enemies come up against me, he was going to go up against them. Because I'm doing the will of the Lord. Okay. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it is not okay to sin. It is not okay to uh to, to say it's to it's not okay to encourage people to falsely prophesy like she does and other false prophets it is not okay to sit there and say that it's okay to mess up because it's not it's not ladies and gentlemen the first peter says that the lord jesus christ says be perfect for ye are per be perfect like the father okay ladies and gentlemen and i'm going to show you for yourself so what I'm telling you if the Lord Jesus Christ is calling for repentance if the Lord Jesus Christ is calling for you to live holy like Jesus Christ that means that you can't sit there and say it's okay to sin and mess up it's not it's not okay to sin when you already have the knowledge that that's sin that that's sin okay that that sin is a wrong and it's so disobedient to God now, Matthew 5, chapter, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. And then we're going to wrap this up because I'm not going to sit here wasting my energy talking about this goat, okay? That's real. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is, which is in heaven, is perfect. So in other words, you have to live righteous before Jesus Christ, you have to be like him, holy, without spot, without sin, without blemish. And you cannot promote sin like these false prophet goats do. You can't do that. You can't say it's okay to mess up because it's not. That's why the Lord tells you to confess the sin and repent. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ will, that's why he calls for repentance. If you are struggling with the sin... You go into your prayer closet and you ask the Lord to help you overcome that sin because it can be overcome by the blood of the Lamb. This person was exposed to false prophecies. She refuses correction. So this is the last time I'm going to talk about this topic on her. She wants to do an expose video on me. That's her problem. That's her choice. I gave you proof that she's a false prophet. I gave you backup. I showed you evidence. Okay. Um, Her thing is she's making an excuse saying that it's... That, um, so what? She has false prophecies. It's okay. She can mess up. That you can mess up and you can still sin. God will forgive you. It doesn't work like that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now that if you have, if you have, okay, the knowledge of that sin and you keep sinning knowing that it's wrong and, and the Lord has sent people to correct you, there is no sacrificial blood left to wash that sin away. That is blasphemy. Okay, and I'm going to. I'm going to um, back that up right now. And I'm going to show you proof. Hebrews 10, 26. Let's go to 10, 26 to 31. Hebrews 10, 26. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up, ladies and gentlemen. But let's talk about this real quick. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Sacrifice means... When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, so there's no more blood to wash those sins away. But a certain fearful looking for but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. So in other words, since there will be no sins to wash that there's to be I'm sorry, there will be no blood to wash that sin away, that person will be condemned. So the fact that she's saying that Pete watchmen like myself are trying to expose false pro pro false prophets like that, are going to be con condemned. What she's telling you is false because it's not even biblical. The Bible's clearly saying right here that if you commit a sin and false prophecy is a sin, you are going to be subject to fury indignation. That means con condemnation by the Most High. Okay? So, for much Sore punishment, suppose ye shall be thought worthy who hath trodden under the Son of God. So, I'm just telling you, 
You want to listen to people like this? That's your choice. Take a look at this. She looks mad old, okay? And I'm just being very, very, like, bold. But I'm telling you this out of love. This right here is a physical representation of what sin is. Like, this is the old man right here, okay? The old man. The Bible talks about the old man which represents sin, okay? So, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I have a soul text in me still. So anyway, what you guys do, I, I mean, look, test the spirits like I just did. And if she tries to hit you with, oh, only, oh, only uh, Jesus Christ can judge. I'm going to refute that scripture right now. You want to see if what she says is true? Jesus Christ said for us to judge righteously. But the Matthew 24 that says judge lest ye be judged, that means that for hypocrites can't judge. Okay? says right here, judge not according to appearance. Remember I told you about that scripture? But judge righteous judgment. So if you see a person that has a big nose, right? Don't sit there and say they have a big nose because everybody's beautiful, okay? You look at their heart, okay? You look at their heart. Look from within, okay? And if you see that that person's doctrines or sin is not as, is not biblical, you talk to that person in privately once. If they don't listen to you, you go with a witness that first time. The second time, you go with a witness. The third time, you warn the church, like the Bible says to do. Judge righteous judgment. It says right here, Jesus Christ is telling you to do that. In other words, you call out these false prophets, okay? This the old man right here. I talked about in the Bible. She is drenched in sin. This is what false prophets look like when they're drenched in sin. They look like they're 70. I'm going to be real. And I'm not joking. I'm just telling you because it is biblical. Look, Solomon, King Solomon was a righteous man. He lived a long life. And even in his 80s, he looked like he was in his 40s. Read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Avoid false prophets like this. This will be the last time I'm going to talk about this topic. Take care.